I know little of them myself, but I can say the following things with certainty. They serve the divine, and they are feared. When a seeker steps from the shadows, Templars run for cover, because why would he come unless the Templars somehow failed in their duties? Well, there are a couple of reasons. Declaring another Inquisition, for example, is one of them. The Seekers of Truth are an order of the Andrestian Chantry that answers directly and only to the Divine. Their duties include to check on the power of the Templar Order, or in rare cases also involve themselves in the hunting of especially dangerous and cunning apostates. Templars usually fear and despise the Seekers, as they only step out of the shadows when the Order is failing in their duties. The Secretive Order, together with the Templar Order, were once known as the Inquisition, the old one, not ours. They banded together to fight against the use of dark magic shortly after the first blight. In 120 Divine, the Chantry convinced the Inquisition to unite under their common faith and the Navarran Accord was signed by both parties. This resulted in the two groups forming the Circle of Magi, with the Templars overseeing them and the Seekers overseeing the Templars. Not much is known about what the Seekers have been up to throughout history, which is unsurprising considering that many people don't even know they exist. Their involvement first became public in 922 Dragon. The Seekers became involved in a blood magic conspiracy, with its roots in the Templar Order and the Chantry itself. Knight Commander Martel, together with Grand Cleric Callista, conspired to overthrow Divine Beatrix III, with the help of Frenic, the leader of a group of blood mages in Orlais. The blood magic cult kidnapped an elven girl called Avexis, who possessed the power to control animals as well as dragons. Although she was saved by Byron and Cassandra, she was later kidnapped again and Frenic used blood magic to control her and her abilities. He used her to summon several dragons, as well as a high dragon to the Grand Cathedral to kill the Divine. Working together with mages from the White Spire, Cassandra managed to stop the conspiracy by killing the rogue Templar commander. He did, however, manage to kill High Seeker Aldrin before his demise. Callista was killed by Frenic himself. Frenic, after transforming into a pride demon and then getting torched by the dragons under the control of Avexis, gets stabbed in the head by Cassandra and falls to his death. Twelve years later, in 940 Dragon, the Seekers openly involved themselves in the White Spire. After a failed assassination attempt on Divine Justinia V and a series of mysterious murders in the White Spire, Lord Seeker Lambert dismisses Knight Commander Aaron and takes control of it himself. He intended to use Evangeline to sabotage Wynne's investigation into the Rite of Tranquility, but she disregarded her orders and the Lord Seeker was forced to let the mages discuss the results of Faramund's research. Faramund was a tranquil that was commissioned by Justinia herself to investigate the Rite of Tranquility. She wanted to know if it was possible to alter it, so that the mage could retain their minds, and if it was possible to completely reverse the Rite. He found out that it is possible to break Tranquility, by having a spirit touch the mind of a tranquil. He experienced it for himself in Element Fortress. This left him in a state of heightened emotions, which wore on him so much that he wished for death and begged Cole to do so. After Fiona called for the Circle to break away from the Chantry, Lambert stormed the chambers and accused the mages of treason and demanded their surrender. They didn't, and the Templars attacked, killing some of them and taking the rest prisoner. Justinia summoned Lambert to the Grand Cathedral in hopes that her agent could liberate the mages in the meantime. He returned too early, however, and managed to defeat Cole using the litany of Andralla. He also killed Evangeline in combat, yet she was saved by Wynne later on. With the Circle breaking away from the Chantry and the Divine wanting to aid mages, Lambert declared the Navarran Accord, the contract that bound the Seekers to the Chantry as a nult. By separating the Templars and the Seekers from the Chantry, Lambert alone claimed responsibility to restoring order in the rising Mage Templar War that would soon span the entirety of Thedos. Lambert himself, however, vanished without a trace shortly after the rebellion of his order. Not long after that, still in 940 Dragon, the Seekers that remained loyal to the Chantry captured Varric Tethras in hopes of learning more about the Champion of Kirkwall. Cassandra had hoped they would aid them in managing the brewing war, but the champion had vanished. They at first looked for the hero of Ferelden, but they had also vanished, should they have survived the fifth blight at all. One year after Lambert's disappearance, Lucius Corrin took over his position and continued to lead the rebel Templars and Seekers against the mages. Cassandra eventually enlists the help of the Inquisitor, 
and together they investigate the missing Seekers. Using the Inquisition's resources, they find them at Kerr Oswin in Ferelden, the castle is occupied by the Order of Fiery Promise, a cult that has always stood against the Seekers. Since Seekers are resistant to the effects of Red Lyrium, they can't be controlled by Corypheus. Thus Lucius led them into an ambush, which forced them to consume delirium, making them fatally ill. He tells Cassandra that Seekers are abominations. Yet after becoming apparent that he had converted to the Promisers, he is killed by the party. Before his death, he hands the Book of Secrets to Cassandra, which was passed down from Lord Seeker to the next since the founding of the Order. In it, she finds out the truth about how Seekers gain their abilities, as well as the fact that they have always known how to reverse the Rite of Tranquility from the start. Cassandra hesitates to rebuild the Seekers, which can be encouraged by the Inquisitor or completely abandoned. What makes Seekers unique from the Templars are their abilities. The majority of them are drafted from the elite of the Order or recruited at a very young age. To become one of them, an initiate must spend months on a vigil, an entire year of fasting, prayer and seclusion. They avoid all contact with the outside and empty themselves of all emotion, focusing on the purity of their devotion. They are made tranquil without even knowing it. The vigil then summons a spirit of faith to touch the mind of the initiate, which grants the seekers their abilities. Unlike the Templars, Seekers do not use Lyrium as a result of their training. They are still able to utilize Templar abilities, but without the risk of succumbing to Lyrium addiction. In addition to that, they possess abilities that Templars do not. One such example is given by Cassandra. Seekers are able to develop the ability to set the Lyrium inside a body's person aflame. Usually this is used to interrogate, paralyze or kill, although the ability to kill is rare. As if that wasn't enough. Seekers are immune to mind control from blood magic and cannot be possessed, likely resulting from them technically being possessed already. What role the Seekers will play now that the Mage Templar War is over is left open, but it's almost certain that they will not vanish, whether rebuilt or not.